Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Agents of Chaos Gaming, where order comes to die and chaos reigns. I am Crunch, playing along with the controller, and I've got the boys with me. A nice, refreshing glass of water. Remember to stay hydrated, people. Indeed. Oh, I am definitely falling. That right now. <laughs> and Being hydrated. Staying hot. <laughs> there you go. And last time, uh, we met our new boy Nero here, and we saw Dante shoot a Pope in the face. I'm sorry, that is not the busty blonde Emperor, so, um, 0 out of 10. I had a feeling that was going to show up eventually. It's me. No, well, I mean, I made... I mean, I made a power ranger reference in the previous recording, but... Well, that was a whole up. gimmick, is making bad references or whatever, is that someone else? You brought this here for me? Kreda requested. She yearns for I cannot comment on that subject. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this blade's the best battle companion a swordsman could wish for. Let me just one hand that case real quick. Did he not use his other arm normally or not? So, the thing with his other arm is that he's trying to hide the fact that it's demonic. It's like, she doesn't know what it's turned into. Uh. Which apparently, from what I understand, the uh, I think there's either like a cutscene in this game where they sort of make reference to it, or it's like a book that they For only released in Japan. That's, what the world That's helpful. But apparently, he got into like an accident or something, and his arm turned into that. And now we have our proper sword, which is known as the Red Queen. It's a killer queen. Trust me, I'll get it done. That's a lovely blade. You still it's a thick it blade, too, if you look at There's it. No time and duty calls. I mean, you know what to say, the thicker the better. Well, it kind of fits with him. Can't pass Especially on with one of the combos that he I can do. What does it have a tr Is that a trigger on it? <laughs> no, it's, it's not a trigger. It's a motorcycle rev. Oh, right. you'll understand why it does that. <laughs> I will explain. Do not worry. But yes, it is also as silly as it sounds. Lovely. All the hoods are running. Is this him? I, I'm not sure. Kratos, take care, Kitty. I got this. So what's the gimmick with the Red Queen? Is it just you rev it up and it gets powerful or what? More or less, like I said, I'll explain once we get into the gameplay proper. Hey, we're a runaway. It's the crying child. I feel like this is a trope. Oh, hands down. There's a motorcycle rev on it. You yeah, so I like the design of these enemies to patchwork. So they're called scarecrows, actually. Also, yes, you can't actually do that. That's what he's doing right now. I don't know how to do it, but you can do that. This baby sure can't pack a punch. 
It's a fist. I would certainly hope so. <laughs> All right, mission two, La Porte de la Enfer. Yes. La Porte de l'Enfer. Anyway, so first thing we're gonna do is power up a bit. So. This is our standard um, item shop where you can buy healing items, gold orbs, etc. Now you might gold notice. Orb. Now you might notice I have quite a bit of currency despite this being a brand new file. Uh, you can blame DLC for that. Basically, when I bought this game, I bought the special edition in like a bundle thing, which came with like a crap ton of red orbs and proud souls. And speaking of the Proud Souls, these are used in the skill up menu. Basically, these are how you buy new moves and skills and stuff. I'm not going to explain all of these, but also that particular move right there, that's the one that I feel like supports the fact that Nero's blade is so damn thick because you can use it that way, where it just like just slams it into people over and over. And also, I do like how this actually shows off like what the moves look like before you decide to use them. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and just blitz through all of these. The only one of real note in here are these, um, these two exceed. These tie into the motorcycle rev thing, and I'll, again, I'll explain that later. Streak, this is Nero's version of, uh, crap, I can't remember the name of it. Stinger, that's it. And then he also has a mid-air one, which is a little bit trickier to execute, but you can do that, which is pretty cool. And then Blue Rose, which is his gun, which in the first mission you saw as a double-barreled revolver. So, that's interesting. So you can get charge shot for that, we'll just grab both of those, and abilities. So you have Table Hopper, which is kind of like a dodge maneuver. And then upgraded ones, which basically let you do multiple of them. They're essentially Dante's um, trickster dodge, but on Nero, speed makes you run faster. Max Act is a difficult skill to execute, but it's kind of cool if you can do it. Get more orbs. This menu, this little skill here is very stupidly named because it doesn't actually work the way the name sounds like it would. It doesn't give you more orbs, and what it does is it's a magnet, essentially. And then you have enemy step, which lets you hop off of enemies' heads, very useful for certain things. And of course air hike, which is now just a regular skill instead of being tied to weaponry, which I am so glad they made that change, because having to have certain weapons on to use it was really stupid. Also, while oh, you was, basically just fill it up, creating Nero. <laughs> not fully. There are more moves that uh, he unlocks later that I can upgrade. But yeah, now starting out, I'm going to be a little bit boosted, to put it mildly, which is absolutely fine for me. I'll see how the tutorials are still kicking off. There is a map on the bottom. This is also just showing how lock-on works. It's the same thing as the others. You hold down a button and it brings up a reticle that shows which enemies you're locked onto. Nothing too special. Anyway, so the rev function is, like you said during the cutscene, essentially when um, you rev your sword up and there's a bar in the top, and you expend one of those bars to power up one of your moves. And some of them will actually act differently depending on if you have them fully revved up or not. I'm not that skilled to be able to really like explain the differences between them, but that is a thing that you can do with it. And that's just telling you, hey, you can go through doors. And this is the part where the the uh, tutorials are gonna kind of start being annoying, but whatever. And you can see the actual thing he walked there. into didn't look that big when he walked into it. I know, right? And yeah, that's just showing you can do wall jumping. So if you come up here, there is a gold orb. But I already have three, so I can't pick it up. But I decided to just splurge on them in the shop. 
but yeah, if you wanted to shortcut that, you could do that. So this game, unfortunately, I feel like is the one that really signifies the issue that I keep bringing up every so often about how platforming in this franchise kinda sucks. <laughs> You're gonna really see a lot of it with this one. Unfortunately. Like, I showed it off a little bit here and there with DMC3, but this one's gonna really be a pain in the butt when it comes to the platforming. And here we have our proper enemy intro to the Scarecrows. As in with DMC3, all of the enemies have like little intro videos when they first make their appearance, although obviously we've been slapping these guys around outside already. So yeah, these are armed Scarecrows. Basically, they have an arm. They have a blade on their arm. whoop de do. <laughs> Not really that big of a deal, all things considered. And also, unlike DMC, or I should say, unlike DMC3, the doors, when they put up the barricades over the exits, they don't generate hands that hurt you anymore. So you can't accidentally be killed by a door. Unlike a certain what a shark. Way. What a way to go. <sighs> Wait, did that really happen? Yeah, so... I'm, yeah, so Gura was playing Devil May Cry 3, and... Her health was like really low, and she was in a puzzle room, so no combat whatsoever. But the puzzle room doors in DMC3 will still generate the hands that will attack you if you get too close to them. And she walked right by it, didn't realize what was going to happen, and the door killed her. It was kind of hilarious. <laughs> so this game also has a lot more free camera movement versus... Uh, DMC3, which stuck to a lot of more static camera angles. Um, this does still have those, like right there, the camera just changed, but you do have a little bit more free movement with it, at least a little bit. And we have a shiny thing here. What the hell? Pretty sure that's most people's reaction looking at this thing. Just the bottom jaw of a skull, what? Bottom jaw of a skull with a blue orb shoved into it. And Nero's arm just ate it. This can only result in good. In this case, actually, yes, despite the fact that it's named Evil Legacy. Alright. So, what this now lets us do is this. When standing on certain platforms, those orbs will pop up, which are known as Grim Grips, apparently. And you can use them to uh, get around. They also serve for another function, but we need an enemy around to actually show off what it does. Um, but yeah, for those who watched the Ninja Theory game, or just have played it, this is kind of where that gimmick of the grapple lines originated, is with Nero's arm. And you could jump across, or you could just do this, because I can't get to aim correctly. But you can grab items from a distance, and actually, before I forget, there are some stuff in these cages down here, so... Come on, Nero. There you go, so that's a green orb, and then I believe over here is a healing item. Yeah, it's a vital star. So the Grim Grips are actually a pretty cool idea. I do like them. There is like, I think, a one spot where its utilization is kind of an obnoxious though. Whee! And also, yeah, down there in the city you can see Scarecrow's going nuts. And so here we have this little thing, which is a secret mission. And I'm going to also preface this right now, when it comes to secret missions in this game, I don't know how to do a lot of these, and there's... The way that some of them are set up is kind of weird. So, which, of course, goes along with the way this game in general is kind of set up, but we'll get more into that later. Anyway, 
this one is just a time limit the mission, so fastest way to kill all these guys if you want to do it semi-efficiently is just bust for all of them. Because it takes two busters to break them. Also, I believe on this uh, game, all the secret missions are have like preset difficulty lines, so they're not like if you um, do these on like a different difficulty mission, the uh, or level the enemies will scale with that difficulty, which was a problem Devil May Cry 3 had suffered from. <coughs> So, what the uh, orb also does for Nero is it actually lets you snatch enemies. And in fact, the maneuver itself is called Snatch. Basically, you throw the hand out, and depending on the enemy, you'll either pull them to you, or you get pulled to them. It depends on how tough they are. Oh. So that's why I said that this is very much where the angel-demon pull mechanics came from in... Ninja Theory's game. It's just in this one, it's contextualized versus being specifically designed to do one or the other. So yeah, like, you're down on the ground, or like up in the air, you can yank them to you and the uh, air combo them. Which is kind of, which is always fun. But mostly it gets used for like platforming puzzles. So do the public like know do like people know about demons in this version or not? So I wanna say yes, just because of the fact that and there's the tutorial for Smash. Um, mostly just due to the fact that like you have an entire freaking order of uh Sparta worshippers, which uh yeah, they're called like I think the Order of the Sword or something like that. I believe that's the name of the actual group that uh, is worshipping Sparta here. Not really sure why, but you know. Maybe they wanted to make a reference to the movie 300? This is Sparta? I don't know. <laughs> I know a bad fun everybody, but... Mm? Let's see, I don't... You're probably not going to see me use the rev function on this thing too often, but it is nice to just charge it up every in between fights. There is actually, so there is a, yes, thank you. <laughs> this is, I'm actually explaining it. The Red Queen's fuel injection system, adding special propellant along the blade that propels the next attack to new heights of power. So you can do crazy stuff like this if you so desire. So there is actually a interesting trick you can do with this where if you are hitting the rev at the exact right time while you're executing a slash, it'll actually give you a bar of juice. And then if you do it at the exact, exact right time, you can actually get the full bar to max out. That's, that's what the skill max act does. However, the timing for it is incredible incredibly precise, and it's something that I have never mastered, I just know that it exists, so. You might see me get lucky with it, because I'll probably be, like, trying to mash on the trigger a little bit to see if I can get it to go off, but, yeah. Also, over here, we had a red orb crystal, it's pretty much like the ones in DMC3, you just wail on it for a while, and it gives you a bunch of red orbs. Also, you come up here, there's another blue orb fragment. Much like in the last game, get four of those, you get a full thing of health. Then you get an extra segment of your health bar, and it also will refill your health when you do it. So, up here is actually a little um, hidden red orb cache. And then even more hidden, though, there's actually another one on top of it. But as you can already tell, um, platforming sucks. As I've mentioned several times already by now, I'm not going to bother with that. So you're probably never going to see me actually get like a full 100% uh, red orbs found thing. The tagline of this series of platforming sucks. 
Unless you're playing Ninja Series game, because that one still has probably the best platforming in the series. Fives is definitely way better, but Ninja Series still has it beat, I would say, honestly. So now we get an introduction to these guys, and what are these guys? These guys are scarecrows with blades on their legs instead of their arms. That's the only reason why they get a different intro. Whoops, they aren't exactly too special. They're just scarecrows again. So, you know. So the deadly carnage. Uh, I believe B is like blast or something like that, and then... A is like awesome or something. And then I believe the S's are like uh, stylish, smoking style, and then like smoking sick style or something like that. Another thing returning from free, the gate. Yep. <coughs> I actually thought that was one of those things from free where you had to use a specific weapon. <laughs> no. The combat adjudicators are in this game, but they are not, uh, they don't function <laughs> like that. <clears throat> I forgot to love the classic. Thing don't work, how do we fix? Yes, shoot it. Bang, bang, bang. It explodes, but it works. <laughs> How does this make any sense at all? It doesn't. Is it cool, though? Yes. Really? Yeah, this is where I get turned around all the time. There it is. Now we got enemies spawning out here, so we're gonna knock them around. Oh yeah, Nero had some really good taunts. That's one thing I didn't really show off too much in DMC3 with Dante was uh, his taunts. Oh, there you go, there's B. Brutal. Because I don't really use the taunting mechanics that much, but Nero has some great taunts. Speaking of, <coughs> one of his taunts is actually kind of. I can actually get some work. Come on. There we go. That's not the button I want to shoot. I just messed myself up. Come on, come on. There we go. Is this. You can actually do the drop kick from that uh, cutscene. You have to be like up at running speed and then hit the taunt button. So what does taunting actually do? Um, it ups your style like a little bit, and then it also does something else that uh, we don't have access to at the moment. But there are actually reasons to use this. Other than Along with just being like cool. And depending on what your style rank is at the time when you use it, he does have different ones that he does. There is. I forget what the style ranking you have to be at for him to do it, but there's one where he starts air guitaring, and it's really funny. <laughs> because it, like music will actually start playing while he's doing it, but again, I don't remember what rank you have to be at for that one. Now there's a atomic. Come on. Now we just need to know what the SEs mean. Shall we dance? <clears throat> Come on. Let's see. Shall we dance? Yeah, I mean that's like his basic ones. <laughs> oh, 
I think the S's are like sick, smoking sick, and smoking sick style. I believe that's what the three S ones are. Okay, drop down here. There's some big old red orb things. And we got some more grim grips here. Whoops. Green orb. And this is the game's version of the combat adjudicator. So they start wailing on this thing. But I do like how it actually like moves with you, so the uh, animations will let you take it airborne, whereas the other ones were like static statues, so your air combos were kind of useless against them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. There we go. That one only needed a B. And they still give out blue orb fragments, as usual. And this is just telling you the shops here, which I am actually going to step into it, because I think it should let me... That's wrong. Is it going to actually let me use it? Can I do it? No. I guess that's going to pop up next mission. Go through the door, Nero. Uh, pardon me? Ooh, it suddenly got very dark. Suddenly very dark. We're outside in a... Old West town looking thing. <laughs> I used to have a home of oh, harmonica. Don't know why why I am I reminded of Kakariko yes. Village and Twilight Princess with us? That looks weirdly out of place. Hey, look, a friend. He's a big boy. Big friend. He's a big, flamey, uh, centaur looking dude. I do like the cutscenes. They are like some of the best parts of this franchise. That suggests that there's more than one hell in this franchise. Anyway, so we have our first big, like, boss fight against Burial. He is a, as you can see, he's a big fiery centaur looking dude. He also has a big ass sword that he swings around. Very devastating, don't get hit by it. Obviously. So there are a few different methods, um, uh, things you can do to attack him. You can, uh, but, uh, snatch your way up to his head and attack his flame. And if you do that enough, it'll actually cut them off like this. And you can now bust through his face to do this. And then you can also do this. So that's one of the cool things with Nero and his boss fights, is that there are going to be times where they will more or less be open and vulnerable like that, and you can come in and hit them with your buster for a devastating attack, which is really nice. Now one thing I do kind of miss from, uh, have from Ninja Theory's Dante is the fact that he can dodge mid-air. Nero has a lot of very like aerial combat-based maneuvers, so you do tend to spend a lot of time in the air with him, but he cannot dodge in the air, which is kind of sad. 
Even Dante had an air dodge with uh, Trickster, called Sky Star, that you could use to move around with, and even kind of had a teleport move similar to what uh, Virgil had. But Nero does not have that, unfortunately. So, more or less, what this guy does is he just sits there and he will swing his big swordy at you, blow fire sometimes. Ow. Now one nice thing about this fight is that all the buildings that are here, if uh, they end up getting broken, they do contain uh, green orbs, so you do get small bits of health back from this. I mean, he's cooled off, but he's not stunned, so I can't get him to bust from the O's with him. Hey, said, big fire guy, why don't you just chill out? And like I said, as you can see, with how much he's hitting me while I'm in midair around him, not being able to dodge midair is kind of a pain. Ow, ow, ow. Watch the threads, dude. <laughs> I know. I'm a considerate. Come on, dude. Let's just get out this time. You know how expensive these things are? I did not believe this. We're in Italy. My Nona just had this press. <laughs> Don't ask. Damn thing drives me crazy, though. So yeah, that was our first big boss fight, and the dude ran away. Uh, uh, That's not a massive hit, but yeah, he'll be back. He's just doing a tactical it. retreat. Pretty much. Apparently the fire hell he mentioned is just like a place inside this universe's hell. Like a different region. You know, that would make sense, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of taking the whole thing of the rain multiple layers of fire, hell, the ice, hell. Yeah, that makes sense. Aim! <laughs> That's actually pretty nice. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's mission two. We are in pursuit of... We have been officially tasked with hunting down Dante, and we got to punch around his big giant fire demon. As you do. As one does. So join us next time as we continue our pursuit of Dante and figure out why exactly he shot a Pope in the face. I'm sure it'll be a perfectly ex I'm sure it'll be perfectly explained as in Dante just and it won't be the Pope was some kind of demon or something. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for Cause watching. That's what, Cause that's what I expect. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>